Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. My name is Chris, and welcome back to my sports podcast. Today, we have a two-time ABC All-Star champion, okay. Victor Pacheco. Victor, thank you for coming on this podcast. <laughs> Absolute legend here. Introduce me to basketball, but thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Of course. Love it. Very last minute. Um, texted you today. If you could come on the podcast, and we, we worked it out. Yeah. It took a lot of last-second planning. Yeah. <laughs> but we're here. I'm glad you're here. If you guys don't know Vic, um, get to know him. Uh, his name is Victor. My name. Uh, he's. I've known you since 2010, so I've known you for about what 14 years at this point. Well over a decade, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I've known you for a while. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he was one that introduced me to basketball in the first place, and then uh, he's a big NBA fan. Like knows a lot more NBA than I do. He's like me, like how I am with NFL. That's a rough rough comparison but it's right it's yeah like i know a lot of nfl history and like all the nfl players and you know a lot about nba and nba history no yeah, yeah, yeah. i just always i don't think like that a lot of times oh especially because like of any because you got me into football and uh -huh. now i'm watching and stuff like that i'm watching the bills and and now i hate stefan diggs <laughs> but uh i'm so interested in stuff like that and that's usually because of you mm -hmm. so seeing the reverse i'm like oh wait I'm just like now getting it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So got me into basketball and I was like, right, I need this guy on NBA encyclopedia. So before we get on, Tobey Maguire, greatest Spider-Man of all time. Is, ain't that right? Uh, I plead the fifth. Okay. It's going to be a short one today, boys. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the movies are back out uh, in theaters. They're re-releasing for the Columbia 100 year anniversary. So... <laughs> Got my. This is my second episode in a row wearing Spider Man merch. Let's see how how far I can I can go with this. Next episode I might wear. Actually, next episode I'm probably not gonna wear Spider Man stuff. But, um. Anyways, Tobey Maguire's a goat. If you don't disagree, argue with a wall. So Vic, we're here talking about NBA, right? NBA regular season, eighty two game regular season, finally just ended. Jesus. Yeah. What a great season. Amazing season. Amazing season. So, now. Uh, the, the regular season ended yesterday, which was Sunday, and now we have about two, three days until the play-in game. Two days until the play-in. So it's uh, Wednesday. Two, no, uh, Wednesday's the East games. Tuesday's the West. So it starts tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, so it starts tomorrow. Okay. So you guys won't see this until Wednesday, though. So what we have already going to be talking about is already probably going to happen. So, But anyways, playing games, matchups currently. So since... What is going to start first? The West? Uh, yeah. So first is Lakers Pelicans. And then after that should be Fox Warriors. Sorry. Kings Warriors. There you go. Kings Warriors. So in terms of standings, Warriors at 10, Sacramento at 9. So they have to win two games to just get into the playoffs. At the 7th seed is the Pelicans. And at the 8th seed are the Lakers. So we'll start first with the Lakers and Pelicans game. First of all, it's going to be a fantastic matchup. But... Who do you think is going to win that game, and what are your thoughts on that? Realistically, I just there's no way the Lakers lose unless they're specifically trying to avoid Jokic. Okay, because crazy stat or not, like they've been, I think, zero and nine since the past three seasons. What do you mean? Like they lost every time they faced the Nuggets. Oh, they lost okay. until us. It's been like what since 2020 they've been losing, 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 on like since they beat them in that series in the bubble. Yeah, right. and then uh. So like unless like they really want to like play God or like just try to test their fates, there's no way because they Las Vegas. Whoa, sorry. There you go. They beat them in Las Vegas by like twenty. They beat them by twenty or thirty last game of the season. It's just and then the way Anthony Davis just guards the pick and roll, especially with Zion involved, it's just way too immaculate. Just because he's too long, he's too fast. He goes straight up no matter what to get a block shot while Zion tries to outmuscle him. But thankfully, like now with AD being so barely, especially now with his healthiest season, that it just became like a right recipe for a team that they didn't think they would have to face until now. Mm -hmm. You don't think like the Pelicans would give AD some problems because they have Valanciunas, they have Larry Nance, and they have Zion. So they have bodies that could throw AD. I think physically, yes, 100%. And on paper, it should be like that. But I guess just trying to put way too much comparison on the those two big games and then the other two games because I think Pelicans are one and three against the Lakers this season. Okay. If I'm correct, I could be very wrong. But um, just on those two biggest games where everyone's watching, the 
Zion, at least Las Vegas, because that's when everyone was talking about his weight and stuff. Mm -hmm. But this last game, he was being very physical. He was trying to get into him. But at least Lakers-wise, that's when they had Rui or someone coming for help. Mm -hmm. While Valanciunas, if I remember the game correctly, he got out of the game like within the third minute. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And just didn't play. Yeah. I don't know if he got hurt, but I remember the announcer saying something on that because I wasn't ap actively watching that game. That was on was that Sunday? Yeah. It was yesterday. Okay, yeah. So, but how, wh what do you think the score of that game will be? Do you think it'll be like a 3-4 possession game, like 8-9 points? What do you think? I think it's uh, like 12-11. Okay. I think it'll be close up to like the third quarter just because that's how it's been for most of the games. Mm-hmm. Until, like, just that one big surge from the Lakers. And just realistically, as long as they're playing for real, like, it's just going to be like that again. It's mm -hmm. just way too common. Unless, magically, like, Brendan Ingram or CJ McCollum just come alive with regarding their shooting. Because, thankfully, the Pelicans have a lot of shooters. Yeah, they do. Like, it's crazy how many they have. While Lakers sometimes, they're lackadaisical or just inconsistent or just don't communicate. Yeah, 100%. I agree with you. So, now let's move on. Sacramento versus Golden State. Oh, man. Last year when they played in the playoffs, seven game series came down to literally the last minute in that series. Was It was a phenomenal series. Then eventually the Warriors ended up losing in the in the next round. Who they end up losing to? Was it Phoenix? Warriors lost to Lakers in six. Oh, wait, really? Yeah. And La then... Yeah, Lakers be... Oh, then Lakers got swept. Yeah. By Nuggets. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Shout out Yoke. <laughs> right, right. So who do you think is going to win that game? I'm so sorry. Like, I lost close to $75 last year because I had the I had the Kings beating the <laughs> Warriors and I was so confident in them and unfortunately I'm not going to be biased about it Warriors are going to beat them again just because really well Malik Monk's not playing oh, and he's yeah. the he's that type of player you would want in a one game like do or die and De'Aaron Fox like he does great but granted Warriors just find a way to guard Sabonis so well especially with just Having Draymond Green being like the buff short man that you need against a very tall guy who wants to bang all the time. Mm -hmm. Pause. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Caught it. Yeah. Either way. Uh, and then it's just, I just don't see the Kings just keeping up with them scoring wise. Mm -hmm. So as long as the Warriors just keep up on their defense, especially on Sabonis, and keeping up on their downhill offense, since they love doing the give and go where. So bonus would be up in the top of the key, and then Fox would just go down and grab the ball and try to set a play. Just that whole section, especially from last year to this year, Kings weren't really playing the greatest, and they're injured. So it's just kind of just putting two together where Warriors should win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know. These playing games are tough. Like These are probably one of the greatest playing games we'll ever see. And we're only, what, four or five years into the, to the playing games? Yeah, competitively wise, just amazing. I think every year has been a competitive, has at least had two competitive games. Yeah. Sometimes three. Uh, don't get me wrong, there's been some stinkers. But ever since, at least visually wise, it's been amazing. I know some people don't really like the whole playing idea. Mm -hmm. You being one of them, I know. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I just, I don't know who's going to win that game. I really don't because I think, I think Sacramento could. Uh, I don't even know what to say, bro. I, I, it, it's just such a. Uh, like coin flip I think sometimes when they match up just because they match up so well but with Malik Monk being out I think I think Golden State has to have the edge um, and I, I think Draymond has definitely been playing better over these last couple games as well so he's definitely been you know he made five threes the other night out of nowhere and his screen assist game is is through the roof which is a stat they need to they need to add but yeah I think I think Golden State will win I, honestly, I think for them to win, I think Curry has to drop like 40, if I'm being honest. Uh, nah, yeah, I agree 100%. Just because Warriors offense isn't really as strong as it used to be. Especially with like Clay not not Wash, but just not him anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, Draymond just never really being that offensive guy unless like the once in a blue moon where he just becomes a werewolf or something. Yeah. Uh, and he doesn't hit people. And then just overall, like their whole team is just not as offensively efficient. Yeah. Granted, Jonathan Kuminga is good, especially in downhill. Like, just bulldozing people is amazing. But Andrew Wiggins is a ghost of himself. Yeah. Gary Payton doesn't play anymore just due to injuries. Um, Trace Jackson Jr., Moses Moody, they're still young or they just haven't really got that many reps. Kevon Looney barely plays anymore. So it's just inconsistency with their whole lineup. Shout out to Brandon Podmitsky, though, just because he's been like a bright spot. Okay. And I think that he will be a, a big reason and if the Warriors play, just because he's one of those like firecrackers. 
Who's that? That's the rookie. Okay. He's the person that they started over Clay when Clay started playing bad. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. All right. So now let's move on to the East. The East for the 7 8 matchup. Good one. You, you're hearing right now is the AC. So. No, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to ask if we could turn off the fan. I'm getting free. I'm freezing. Turn right off? Now. Turn off? I'll turn it down one. Yeah, turn it down. I'll turn it down one. I'm freezing right now. Yeah, we're going. Like, I'm pretty sure when you're editing, I'm going to be shaking. <laughs> You're good. The, the reason I keep it on is because, A, I'm glad you wore pants. I didn't tell you to wear pants. I normally tell my guests to wear pants, and I wear pants, and I get hot very easily. So that's why I keep the fan on. So, and if not, I start sweating, and like, then it starts getting sticky. But anyways, 7-8 matchup in the, in, the, in the East for the play-in. There's Sixers at 7, Heat at 8. So who do you think is going to win that series? I think there's a clear answer. So I'll just ask you. I'm sad. <laughs> It's going to be the Sixers. Right. I'm going to cry. <laughs> and then he are going to be the AFC. No, no. No. Then y'all got to play. Yeah. Then we got to play the Sixers. Exactly. <laughs> and then I'm just going to go cry in the shower or something. No, no, no. no. Y'all, <laughs> whoever wins that series is going to the conference finals. Yes. Whoever wins that series. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Confidently, yes. Okay. That was an easy one. That was quick. It was like 30 seconds. Then the next one <laughs> is a 9-10 matchup. You got Chicago playing the hawks trey young back chicago just had a very good game against your knicks came down to the wire alex crusoe coming up big vooch playing big uh cody white playing big so that was a great game who do you think will win that series uh realistically just chicago um really? every yeah every time the hawks play them trey young just does doo-doo granted i would assume was not playing and he's probably one of their best defenders but you still have like all them probably all defensive team second team most likely i Alex Russo. Yeah. So it's just it's just so hard to think about it, especially because they Chicago has so many guards that can defend, and then their scoring is just consistent. Mm-hmm. Granted, their offense isn't the prettiest, but it's just so consistent, especially when Vooch decides to get going. And if he can score, I think he scored, like, what, over 30 against us, where it's Mitch and Isaiah Hardenstein, who I consider better than Capella. Like, he can definitely go crazy on Capella. Granted, he has to get the ball first. Uh, DeRozan, he should play fine because he's always going to be a confident 20, comp 10, yes, sir. Uh, that's his nickname in high school. Yes, but, sir. <laughs> no, no, Compton. Oh, <laughs> okay. Compton, number 10. Gotcha. Yeah. And I do believe that the Hawks just suck. No offense to my friends who love the Hawks. It's just they're the only team with their best two players being a net negative, And net rating is just basically like their efficiency offense and defensively. Mm-hmm. They're the only team with the two best players being a negative that's crazy yeah and they're negative 11 mm. the next one i think is the going to be the pistons with Cade and duran and oh they're a God. positive two wow yeah like i looked it up like a couple days ago and i was just like that's so shocking to me mm. they just don't fit they just don't match granted they're gonna win games just because talent like if i put you up against a thousand middle schoolers sure the one middle school that's gonna get in the high in the nba is gonna like maybe give you a challenge or beat you but you're still going to beat a bunch of middle schools. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, that's just how I see it. Like, they're so talented, but it just doesn't fit. And because of that, and because Chicago is just a little more well, well-defined, well especially defensively, I think they're going to beat the Hawks for sure. Yeah. And this is without Zach Levine, because he's faced injuries and then he's out for the season. So that's tough. And then Trey Young, has he? how many games has he played since he's been back? Is it like three or four or something? Yeah, he just got back. Like, he okay. just became, like, available to them. Yeah. So, that'll, that'll be a close one, too. But, yeah, I think Chicago will win. But I think it's one of those games where, like, Chicago could be up by 20. And then out of nowhere, Trey Young just picks it up. And then it's, like, a five-point game with, like, three minutes left, you know. And then it just depends on how good Chicago wants to play and if they want to step up. Because, you know, against the Heat last year in the play-in, they were up and then... Miami just ended up coming back. Jimmy Butler just did his thing, and then he ended up coming back and win the game. So, yeah, I think I think these playing games are going to be really, really good. The only one that may not be good is probably the, the one we just talked about, the yeah. Chicago game. So That's going to be the least watch for yeah, sure. For sure. Yeah, for sure. So now um, we can move on, and we can talk about NBA playoff predictions of the playoff series that we know we're going to get. Yeah. So we'll start off at the East first. So the East, we have... The 4-5 matchup, we have the Cavs and the Magic. So, I want to ask you, who do you think will win that series and in how many games? Orlando Magic. Really? You Orlando think Orlando will win that, that series? 
I believe it, and I and I'm hoping for it. Okay. Yeah. I just because, uh, thankfully, Paulo and Franz like they're 21 years old. Hold they, on. How many games? Oh, uh, six or seven. Okay. I yeah. continue. Cavs are just too talented, but I think for sure, like Paulo and Franz, there's the way they play, make, and attack the basket is like the way you would want a six, sorry, six ten wing now. Uh, and then like they don't, they just don't chuck shots or anything like that. They don't play. Their IQ is just immense for just being 21 years old. Mm-hmm. And, of course, t- Jalen Suggs, who's also 22 years old, is going to be on Donovan Mitchell for basically the whole game, or Gary Harris. And I just think their defense is just strong enough to keep their cl- Cleveland's offense down while still having their offense somewhat available because both teams suck on offense. Both yeah. teams are great on defense. This is probably going to be the one that <coughs> no one watches just because it's going to be ugly. Yeah, It's going to be a slog fest. And I'm going to enjoy it just because I love that type of sh- those type of games. Whoa. But... Uh, I just I do think it, uh, Orlando should win. Don't get me wrong; I'm pretty sure I'm going to be wrong. Hey, it's okay to be wrong. No, yeah, uh, I think I think it only goes six games. I don't know who wins, but I think it only goes six games. But like you mentioned, both teams stellar on defense, stellar on defense. Just offensively, it can be a little tough for them to get going. But I think in terms of offense, I mean, even though the Cavs have a better offensive team i don't know what they rank but even though they have a better offensive team i think the magic once they get going i think if they're just clicking and they're getting polo ball you know he's getting his shot down on the block if, if franz is up if, if mo is up if if uh jonathan isaac if he's getting some of his shots in the paint like i think they can just keep moving but then on the other side of the court you got darius garland you got donovan mitchell who's kind of been a little up and down the, the last couple weeks uh and then they got who's the guy with the big afro jared allen. jared allen so they they got guys on that team that can that can really play and that can really score and also do it on the other side of the basket so we'll see but i think either way it goes six games no more no less i don't know who's going to win the series i would love to see orlando win because then we can go to another game yeah because we're going to be going to game three so that was expensive would, that, yeah it's expensive but that's going to be a good series for sure and might be a little bit boring but hey it's okay. It's okay. It is what it is. Any anything else you want to touch on on that series that you think Donovan Mitchell is going to be the key? Okay. That's it for the Cavs. Uh, just watching Cleveland way too many much times just because I love Donovan Mitchell because you know he's supposed to be a Nick, but it's whatever. Uh, base like just watching them when they went on that twenty four run, it was all him. There was no issue because Darius Garland was injured and Evan Mobley was injured. And then when he got injured and Darius Garland and Evan Mobley came back, they played like subpar. And you could just kind of see it that there's been too many games where they just kind of let go. Mm-hmm. Like they lost to Charlotte Hornets three times this year. Holy crap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that should not happen. I don't count last time because Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland didn't play. But granted, there's just been too many games where they just kind of let go, especially in March. It's because they were the second seed. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure there's just some maybe uneven tension around there because there was that whole interview where Donovan Mitchell said in, in like after the game, like, yo, we can't be losing this stuff because like we need to we're trying to win a championship and we're losing to bumps mm-hmm. he didn't say that in verbatim but he basically said that yeah now the next the only other confirmed bucks pacers i mean Giannis, his status is up in the air thank god it wasn't an achilles injury right yes. thank god who do you think wins this series actually i'm not even gonna say who do you think is gonna win the series because we know who we all know who's gonna win the series how many games do you think milwaukee is gonna win that series uh milwaukee should win four in four no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. They should win four games. I think I misheard you. But uh, six. Six it's again. Si- you're giving Indiana two games? Yeah. Wow. Both home games? Uh, or just split? Both home games, probably. Okay. Actually, no. They're going to win game one because Giannis isn't playing. You think they're going to win game one? Yeah. I'm glad he put like a 10 on it, too. <laughs> okay. They did just drop 158. Yeah. <laughs> on the freaking hog. Yeah. <laughs> They're just uh, their offense is just so high powered, and Tyrese Halliburton is just such a good player. It's just he's just such a good player and all that like it's just easy for him to get assist, and he's not like ball hugging either about it. So he's just the the whole offense is moving. Their defense has been a lot better since All Star break, thankfully with Siakam and Aaron Neesmith playing more, and it's just just well more fluid. Just back and forth, running fast, getting your steals, getting your blocks, just being able to do whatever you really want to against the teams that you should beat. And we've all kind of seen that the Bucks were losing, like, they're 4-1 and one against them. 
that's crazy for a team where you have like probably the third best player and supposed to be a number 10 ish player mm-hmm. and don't get me wrong like sure bucks defense suck but still like you should be beating teams that are beneath you mm-hmm. and uh, so yeah i think they're gonna get two games one for tyrese Halliburton just going off and then because Giannis isn't playing mm-hmm. but bucks should win so if Giannis plays game one you think they win in five yes okay i can get behind that i think they win in five even if Giannis's status is if Giannis misses game one, I still think they win a five. I think possibly they lose game one, but we'll see. Because Dame, bro, if Dame takes over, come playoff time, players are different, bro. Because they know everything's on the line. So what's happened in the regular season is behind them. Playoffs time is now. It's time for players to start playing, you know, 40 minutes, 44 minutes a game, you know. So Dame's going to be getting the ball a lot more. Chris Middleton is going to be getting the ball a lot more. All those guys are going to be getting a lot more more shots than they did in the regular season so i think i i think bucks went in five what i'm really just scared for the bucks is just that like you said i hope the james dame later just goes off just because that'll be a show and it'll be something great for the bucks and then also just they're getting old man how old is chris middleton he's like 31 yeah but he also he's just been so inconsistent uh, regarding his injury and stuff like that this is like the least amount of games he played this year he hasn't really been close to 80 ish percent of him mm-hmm. and then the games he does play well in they're thankfully on tv so no one really notices it but like this has been his most inefficient year i think mm-hmm. since like he was in detroit and it just it's not really great especially for someone you want there to be there for especially as a playmaker mm-hmm. and then of course brooke lopez is just i think he's 34 ish yeah he's pretty old yeah but like the, he just looks old. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the Bucks should win no matter what. It's just like you can definitely tell they're downgrading a bit. Like you can see the you can see the potential of them just spiraling down because of like the signs are there now, and that's what I'm kind of scared for regarding like just losing that one step on the wrong time because they already did it last year with the Heat. So I just if they do that again, then there's big questions there. They should have never let let go of Budenholzer, man. I agree with you 100. Uh, percent Just. You got to let coaches just stay, man. Like, like Eric Sposal, he, he stayed there for years. You know, Mike Malone, he's been there for years, you know. And even if they don't, like, there's there's just no reason to get rid of your coach that led you to an NBA championship. You know, it's just, it's so dumb because, you know, you could say, oh, grass is greener on the other side. But is it really, you know, to find an NBA coach, or NBA head coach for one of the best teams in the NBA, like, I don't know. It's just it was so, so tough, you know, because Budenholzer, he has that experience with all his players. He had that experience in the playoffs, winning a championship, going through adversity, those matchups, uh, knowing when to, you know, what's it called? Knowing who to who to play, you know, his roster, knowing how to go through the rotations. You know, he knows his guys and he knows what's best for him. But and then you got uh, it's just so stupid. I was not a fan of it. But now with Doc Rivers as that head coach, I'm, man, if, woo, if they lost, if they blew a 3-1 lead, oh my God, I'd be partying to the end of the world because Doc Rivers is the most overrated coach in NBA history. I mean, it's just, see ya, he's just not good. So I'm excited to see them blow another lead. Sounds like you have a little history there. Uh, just just a little bit, you know, being a, being a Clippers fan and all. Mm. Yeah, not personal. No, nothing personal at all. <laughs> So now I'm um, going to take a quick break. This video is sponsored by Bueno. Click the link in the description for 100% off of your Bueno purchases. <laughs> Just kidding. We're not sponsored by Bueno or, or Kindo. Kind, Kinder Bueno. Um, but I got one for you if you want if you want to pop one open. Oh, no, of course I will. Because these things are so fire. And Christina, she's allergic to uh, peanuts and this has hazelnut in it. So they're all for me. I just literally eat them all. So you just... ASMR, you heard that? Bro, that was insane. Oh! Oh, yo! Hold on, hold on. That was actually kind of fire. I see why people like ASMR. Hold on, hold on. Ready? Oh, my God! How should I do this one? Just like a big crunch or like soft and silent? Soft and silent. Mm. Bro, bro, that's insane. Bro, that's funny. Mike picks up everything. It's just 
You get so close to it and just. Now I see why my sister watches these. That's, that's, that's fire. Hold on, let me make sure. Okay. <clears throat> now, back to our original program. Cut. No, I'm just kidding. Now in the West, confirmed matchup. 4-5. Clippers Mavs. But God damn it, Kawhi Leonard's health is up in the air, and I'm so fucking pissed, man. So, it hasn't really been announced, unless like you you religiously follow the NBA. It has not really been announced that Kawhi Leonard has been out, and it has not really been announced that he has a knee problem and has knee inflammation. People are just assuming that he's out because you know he's resting for the playoffs, but he's been out for about two weeks now. They're going to give him another, you know, couple days because uh, we, we've got the play in. But Kawhi Leonard's uh, health is, is still up in the air because Ty Lue has not confirmed him to be playing for game one. He has knee inflammation or so they say, um, which in back in 2021 uh, during the Utah series, they said Kawhi sprained his knee when in actuality he tore his ACL. So. I don't know if they're gatekeeping information or what, but 4-5 matchup. Let's say Kawhi's healthy and they're Ty Lue just messing with the media. It's going to go 7. So who do you think is going to win? Uh, it's going to go 7. Yeah. I don't want to say. <laughs> you don't want to say because it's the Mavs, ain't it? it? It's just so... I, I was hoping this series wasn't going to happen in the first round. Me too. For both sakes. Because yeah. I love both teams no matter what. Uh, especially for y'all because I wish you guys had more success. Mm-hmm. And as long as Kawhi is healthy, it's going to be hectic. It's going to be competing. It's going to be amazing. Um, but the Mavs are just so well off. Does Luca being MVP, or at least he miss it, but he'll also be second place or whatever. But Luca playing like like this um, in a my career mode, basically. Kyrie basically being his Superman. He said that, not me. And then you got p jail washington that's his nickname on the internet now because his defense just came out of nowhere <laughs> uh derrick jones jr like you have strong defenders for the pg and the Kawhis, and then of course like you have two like lob like yep. jumping out of the stadium type of centers derrick lively and daniel gafford and it's just a recipe that should that's going to work and it did work because the mass went on a crazy run from going out from the a seats and now being the fifth seat almost catching up to you guys yep and it's just unfortunate for both teams because I think both teams are basically now championship contenders. But now because of that, you guys are facing each other yeah. because of just either scheduling or just losses. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong, though. It's like 49-51. Yeah. I flip on it every day. While driving over here, I'm like, Clippers should win, right? <laughs> like, PG, Kawhi, like Kawhi's a menace. Mm-hmm. He's crazy. Especially like when he was healthy last season and you guys were playing the Suns. Genuinely, you guys should have won that. Yeah. And then he got hurt, and it was just Westbrook, and then Westbrook got hurt, and then it was basically just a, a dump show. Yeah. So I just genuinely believe that it's going to keep flip-flopping. By the time this comes out, I'm going to be like, you go Clippers. But then when the game actually happens, I'm like, vamos maps. Yeah. So it's just, it's so hard, genuinely. That's like, what she said. you're right. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, overall, I do like your you guys better, though. Mm-hmm. At this current moment, I like you guys better. Uh, as a team, as a roster, just fit. You guys have you guys have more bodies in case uh, Norm Powell gets down or he's just not shooting well because he's a trucker. You guys still have Amir Coffey to play, Terrence Mann to play. Um, in case Zubox isn't doing anything, which I think he's going to get played out of the series, in my opinion, you still have Daniel Tice, which I think you guys should play more. Mm-hmm. Um, or you guys, you still have Mason Plumlee, who is more of a offensive guy. Excuse me, I burped. Or you guys can play small because the maps play small as well. Like, it's just such a, in, it's going to be a very interesting chess match. And genuinely, I think Clippers win in seven. As okay. long as you guys are healthy. If you're not healthy, maps going into the conference finals or something. I don't know. Yeah. But maps will, yeah. It just really depends on Kawhi. And I'm really hoping that he's just being weird about the media and not wanting to say anything. Mm-hmm. They're going to get a big fine regardless. But yeah, I'm just hoping he's just saying this just to say it and not get people's expectations up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think both these teams match up really, really well. Like, you got Kawhi and PG, then the Mavs, you got Kyrie and Luka. Then you got Tim Hardaway, then you got James Harden. Then, then you got Russell Westbrook, then you got PJ Washington. Then you got Zubak, and then you got 
Who's their the white guy number forty two? What's his name? On which their, team? Their center uh, for the Mavs. Uh, they don't have a white center. He's like his skin tone is white, Vic. Dwight Powell? No, but that's also a good one, bro. The white guy number forty two. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let's do Dallas Mavericks. Roster. Maxi Kleber. Thank you. Yeah, I was about to see. Yeah, that guy. He's our center, right? He plays center. He plays power forward. Oh well, close enough. Close enough. They're right there, you know. Yeah. It's, a, it's like wide receiver, slot, slot receiver. You know. Anyways, football. But yeah. When you got Zubak and you got Max Kleber, and you got Norman Powell, then you got what? What's the guy's name? Uh, <laughs> Mavs again? Yeah. Jaden Harley? No. Dante Exum? No. Come that's here. that's the one. Um, Daniel Gaffer or some. Oh, Daniel Gafford, their center. There you go. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm not trying to. I'm just saying they got got like we we both got guys that can play on both sides. And then head coach, you go Ty Lue and you go Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd. So I think obviously Ty Lue has the edge. You know, he won an NBA championship, been to NBA finals. Um, he's been a coach in the league for a lot longer than uh, Jason Kidd has. But I think Jason Kidd has done a great job of managing that roster. Because at first, people, once he got the job, they were saying white privilege and all this crap. And I'm like, get the hell out of here. Like, what? He's done such a great job in maturing as, a, as head coach. I love to see. You love to see great NBA players turn into great NBA head coaches, you know. So that's something I'm, I'm excited to see. But it all depends on Kawhi Leonard. If Kawhi doesn't play, I think Mavs win in five or six, if I'm being completely honest. I still give you guys six. Okay. Because as long as <clears throat> we get playoff P, like, you guys, should, you guys should still win too. That's he true. did take y'all to a Western Conference Finals. <laughs> well, no. It was... Well, I guess. I mean, we won in six. But Kawhi got hurt game four. So, he only had to play two games without him. So, And then he did win you guys three against Phoenix. Or two against Phoenix, too. But yeah, still, you know. But it's just cool to see... Like I've said it in the group chat multiple times. Come the end of the regular season. You see guys start to really play... 39, 40, 41 minutes because they're getting ready for the playoffs. And, it, you know, seeing Paul George immerse again, it's like, oh, my God, I forget how good Paul George is, you know. And seeing Kawhi play all those minutes, it's like, oh, my God, I forgot how good Kawhi Leonard is, you know. Last season, uh, when Kawhi went off in Phoenix for, like, 38 points game one, people were like, oh, my God, I forgot how good Kawhi Leonard is. And it's because, no, no, no crap, no, no, sh you know what I'm saying? Because – Regular season, guys don't play that hard, you know, but come playoff time, they're like, all right, championships on the line. Let's finally start playing, you know what I'm saying? So that's going to be such a good series, but it all depends on Kawhi Leonard, man. I pray to God he plays because if he does not, you will see, I will, you, I will be dead if Kawhi Leonard does not play. Like, I'll be dead. Like, in the podcast, everybody. Yeah, it will be over because <laughs> I will not be alive because Kawhi Leonard is hurt again. Hey there, buddy. Anyways, that was my cat. She's knocking herself over. So, but yeah, that's going to be such a good series. And uh, it's like you like you mentioned, it's so sad because they're such great teams and they're contenders, but then playing in the first round sucks. Yeah, 100%. And it's going to be unfortunate for either team. Um, thankfully, I don't think it's going to be a situation where a team loses and they're like, damn, we need to make a change. Yeah. Uh, I do believe that like you're right, teams teams do try harder, and thankfully the Clippers are one of those teams. Thankfully the Clippers, like at least we got a showcase of how great they can be. Mm -hmm. Because you guys went like twenty and twenty seven and three that one run. Oh yeah, you're talking about or, uh, yeah something like that. Yeah, it was just heavy run and everything. So thankfully we got like we got to visualize their greatness and everything, especially now with them not being injured. And so just more of appreciating basketball like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to sweat every game now. <laughs> yeah, we're fully healthy minus Kawhi Leonard's status. So that is, uh, oh, excuse me. So in terms of going into the playoffs, that's like what you want from every single team. Like you want everyone like fully healthy. And that's thankfully what we have. And we have so much depth. So I'm not going to sit here and talk about the Clippers all day long. But next series, Wolf Suns. It's going to be such a good series, if I'm being completely honest. I think the Suns match up so incredibly well against this Timberwolves team. So you got uh, Juric, Nurkic, right? Nurkic, at, yeah, at the, the center. center. And then you also got Kat, who, who came back. Then you got KD, you got Bradley Bill, you got D-Book, you got Grayson Allen, you got Eric Gordon, 
I mean, you got so many guys on this team that can score. And then on the other side, you got Nazareed, six man of the year. You got Anthony Edwards. You got Rudy Gobert. You got uh, Mike Conley. You got uh, Kyle Slomo Anderson. Like, you got guys on both sides. And the Timberwolves being a top five uh, defense in the NBA as well, uh, net rating wise. This series, I think it's going to be so, so good. I'm expecting to see D Book and, and, and KD average like 28, 29 a game. And just go crazy and then see who else is going to step up. Is Bradley Beal going to step up? Because he's been inconsistent. Is uh, Grayson Allen going to step up? Just got that big contract. Four years, 70 million. Or was it four years or three years? Four years, 70 million. Four years, 70 million. And then is Eric Gordon, he's going to drop 10 a game. Is he going to hit big time threes? So I'm excited for this series. I cannot tell you how excited I am about this. Yeah. This is one of those like you have to like love. Like you have to want to watch this game. Yeah. Yeah. And I was hoping you guys face the Suns because mm -hmm. I think you guys are like 100% like perfect matchup against them okay. as in like to stop them. But the Timberwolves are right there as well because uh, they do have Gobert. So there's no more driving in the paint. Granted, the Suns actually like rank last in driving in the paint, like paint points and everything. Wow. Yeah, because KD and Booker love mid range. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with that, but paint points are easier. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, yeah, you have all defensive first team, Jaden McDaniels, Anthony Edwards love defending and he loves talking mess about it can i say the c-r-a-p yeah all right he loves talking crap to them and stuff yeah. like that like literally when he faced y'all and the sons on the first game of the season he was just like oh people versus young people and then like <laughs> like it got so like i kd so mad where he's like nah be quiet yeah my fault i'm like really trying to like make sure i don't like curse but it's just anthony or just he's a show he's gonna be amazing the fact that this is a second playoff run where Everyone's just going to be watching, and we're going to see basically Michael Jordan's son be born. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. And they have enough defense to keep up with the Suns, not stop, because there's no stopping in NBA. And I think for the Suns as well, especially the last game where they just out of nowhere became a nuclear team again, <laughs> like dropping nukes on a Call of Duty map, it was crazy. But I do think that it's going to go seven. Like this is, mm -hmm. this is one of those seven. I want the Timberwolves to win personally especially with cap being back like it's just one of those teams that i just enjoy watching and i think they can go like depending on matchup western conference finals i don't think they win it all but this is just one of those teams where it's more of like a cinderella but people are not viewing it as that because of some of its players because you know people don't like gobert or they're viewing it as like this is going to be the new must see even and it's amazing for how much because they gave away so much for gobert people them are giving them so much mess about the way the roster is being constructed and now it's just being built like it's it's showing what the guy uh, on the chair had envisioned i don't know the guy's name but yeah uh, you mentioned trash talk that's gonna be a big one d book and anthony edwards what oh i forgot about bro that. that's gonna be that's gonna be a good trash talk every night back and forth back and forth um but i'm, I'm excited i think the Timberwolves can win the series in six. I think if anyone wins in six, it's 100% the Timberwolves. Can? Huh? Can? Like, if anyone wins in six, it's the Timberwolves. Oh, okay. Like, Suns will not win in six. If The only chance the Suns have of winning is in seven. Mm. That's kind of what I'm saying. I think Timberwolves win the series, but I'm saying if anyone, if they can win in six, they will, sort of thing. Like, yeah. I don't know if... Yeah, if it's not seven, it's six and Wolves. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't mean to harp on it, but going back to the Clippers, I forgot to mention James Harden. No, I, f I forgot to mention James Harden. I completely forgot. And then I didn't mention Terrence Mann either. And I was like, you were sitting there talking about the Suns and Timberwolves. I'm like, dog, I didn't mention James Harden. Or I didn't mention Terrence Mann. I mentioned Terrence Mann. Yeah, you mentioned Terrence Mann. But I was like, how do I forget James Harden? I just, I just forgot about him. But yeah, that's going to be a good series. That's okay. He's forgotful in the playoffs. <laughs> Who? Harden. Oh, okay. They're talking about Terrence Mann. That's Rudy Gobert's dad, by the way. You're right. That's Ma why they're not facing them. Yeah. Mama, there goes that man, baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shout out Mark Jackson, the greatest ESPN commentator of all time. Shout out Adam. It's your favorite commentator. <laughs> um, anything else you want to touch on in terms of NBA playoff matchups before we get into the next topic here? Uh, you want to go over like the potential ones? Because we kind of already predicted the plans. You want to you wanna do that? Yeah, I don't mind. Okay. So, uh, one seed, uh, OKC, 
who do you think they would face? Because they would get the winner of the wait. They would get the winner of the nine ten matchup. Yeah, they would, they would get the winner of um oh, the the okay. Sorry. So you think Lakers are gonna win, right? So yeah. Lakers Nuggets. So let's talk about that series first. I I'm gonna go first. I was harping when I had Jesus on the podcast, and when I had Donnie on the podcast, I was harping on this series because this is the series that I wanted. Lakers Nuggets. I think they match up so well. I personally think they match up so well. You know. Because the Lakers, I think the Lakers are deep. They just have not been winning games. But I think they've got got they've got so many guys from one down to like twelve on the roster. They've got guys that can play. So you got Braun, you got AD, you got D'Lo, you got Austin Reeves, you got Anthony, uh, Anthony, um, yeah, uh, Anthony, An- Anthony Reeves. That's his name, right? Austin Reeves. Austin Reeves. <laughs> Thank you. Then you got um, uh, Hachimura, who you can throw. Pretty much at anyone. You got um, no. There's one more guy. There's one more guy. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, oh, no, 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 no. I think that might be it. No, there's one more. There's one more. Say one more. You said Jackson Hayes. Jackson Hayes. Okay. That's another, that's another big guy you can throw at him. So and then on the Nuggets, oh, they just, bro, Nuggets have a whole roster, dog. They got Jamal Murray, Jokic, MPJ. Reggie Jackson, Aaron Gordon. Bro, they've got so many guys on that roster. And then who else is their uh, sixth man that comes off the bench? Uh, their better one is... Um, Jesus is going to kill me. Christian Brown? Uh, Payne Watson. Christian oh, okay. Brown as well. Christian Brown's really good. D- does he start? Christian Brown doesn't start. Who starts? Uh, Murray, KCP. KCP. Uh, yes, KCP as well. That's that's the guy I was thinking of. Um, but bro, I think it's going to be a good series because I think matchup-wise, I think... The Lakers have guys on that roster that they can just throw at Jokic for for fouls. Like Jackson Hayes, uh, Hachimura defended. I don't want to say he defended Jokic well, but he certainly, I'm going to use this word very lightly, gave Jokic a problem. Being a lot more physical with him, you know, forcing him to take, not forcing him, but giving him those harder shots that Jokic obviously makes, but getting in his face, being more physical, and then you got a Jackson Hayes that you can just throw. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a good series, man. Yeah, I think for the Lakers, it's basically like they have defense wise, they have to just run with the Hachimura and then most likely Hayes now, depending on fouls, mm-hmm. on Jokic and then using AD as help. AD, I forgot about AD. You, did, you didn't even say him I once. I know. Go ahead. Crazy. I know. Yeah. Such a good player, too. <laughs> wow. Either way. Um, so you're probably going to have to do that. And it's definitely like it's worked to keep them competitive. Um, and it, it works every time because the Lakers don't really bow out against the Nuggets, which is a good thing. Uh, and thankfully, D'Angelo Russell is playing a lot better now, especially after like a lot of Lakers fans wanted his head. Shout out to Twitter. Yeah. Um, and then you still have Dispenser Dinwiddie. You still have LeBron just being like an amazing player that he is. And I think the Lakers will play well. I just there's I just don't see a way where the, the, they win. Mm-hmm. I think Nuggets are just way too good. Their starting five is going to play 40 plus minutes, like you said. Yeah. And I think during those 40 minutes, 40, yeah, 40 minutes, that there's just, it's going to be positive for them no matter what. Don't get me wrong. Like, I know last year in the playoffs, like, they lost in four. But I think the win differential was, like, three or four. Like, every game they lost, they lost within, like, one possession. Yeah. Which is a crazy thing to say. But no matter what, you're just, even though you're one step behind, that one step is going to make you lose that game. Mm -hmm. And I just don't see the Nuggets not losing. How do you think? How many games do you think it goes? Five at most. Are you f- at most? Yeah, I could see it going six, dog. Six is possible. Like I like. Don't get me wrong. Like I could definitely see six, just because LeBron is good enough to win you a game, and then Anthony Davis is really good enough to win you a game. It's just, I just there's no like I just see Jokic out getting his triple double. I see playoff Murray coming in, especially when people start bringing out the meme of him since the bubble. <laughs> Because, you know, his head's just in the game. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, my God. <laughs> shout out to you. So they're just they're just different people in the playoffs. And like you said, big time players, big time moments. They play better in the playoffs, like how you alluded to Dame. And I just, there's, even though I'm like, I'm not being like uh, more, I mean, I'm being more theoretical about it. I just, there's no possible way. I just don't see the Nuggets winning. I mean, I, I see the Lakers winning. Yeah. 
Nuggets are going to dominate. Jokic is still going to get his 30 and such because even though you can put the hardest defender you want, and Rui did cause him problems, mm -hmm. that's probably the best defense you can play on Jokic. It's just that, thankfully, due to his vision, due to, like, um, due to his vision of just, like, passing the ball, especially when they triple teamed him on, like, the third game they played, and then Austin Rees tried going top of the key, steal the ball from him. He just threw it like that. <laughs> and KCP caught the ball in the yeah. corner and just yeah. hit that. So it's Jokic is too good, especially playmaking. He has he has way too many options in his arsenal to kind of like mitigate. Um, genuinely, I do believe that if they do win, it's because Murray just sucks, and everyone else is not playing up to their par. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. So you said the most it goes is five. So I'm, I might seem arrogant about that, but yeah. So you don't think like the Lakers can steal a game because you said the most it goes in five. Like, you don't think they can steal, like, two games? Like, if they're at home, you know, Braun has a game. Obviously, the Nuggets are going to win the series. I'm not trying to advocate for the Nuggets not winning the series. But if we're talking about, like, one game or two, I think the most it goes is six. But I think, dog, I think the Lakers could win a game or two. Like, genuinely. Potentially. I 100% like, believe that they could. Because, mm -hmm. you know, LeBron's not getting younger. Yeah, that's true. And I think it could definitely like show off to the point where like they're going to get a win off. Maybe you can get people some thinking differently. Mm -hmm. It's just that I think for def Denver's defense wise, like Aaron Gordon's going to get on LeBron every minute he plays Aaron Gordon, no matter what. And then at least to contain AD, you're going to try your best with Jokic. AD's going to get his like 40 probably. Yeah. But Jokic tries on defense now. He's not, and he's not, he's in shape. Like, there's a shirt of him, picture of him being shirtless, and he has abs. Yeah. Yeah, like better abs than I ever had. And I'm fat. <laughs> so it's just one of those things that if your main team is at its peak, it's really hard to get that peak down now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the 1 8 matchup, who do you think is going to be that, that 8 seed? Because we never talked about that next game of who would win between Pelicans and Warriors. So I believe the Golden State Warriors are going to win. Really? Yes. And I know you're looking at me like I'm smoking. That's crazy, bro. What? And it just makes me mad that I think this now. Because I want the Pelicans to win. I genuinely want the Pelicans to win. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, basically, the reason I'm thinking this is because I'm, I'm, I'll be very happy if I'm wrong. Because I hate, I want the Warriors to start over. Mm -hmm. in a, not rebuild, but just make trades. But I just think the Warriors are going to win because they're three and one. I have to look it up. But I believe they're three and one against the Pelicans this season. Yeah, or okay. two and two, something like that. But we're and then thankfully, the Pel the last season the Warriors were the worst road season, roast road team in the season. Now they're like twelve, fifteen ish, which is good, mm -hmm. big improve. And they're not playing at home; they're playing in New Orleans. Uh, I just don't see. A certain way because Draymond's probably the best suited to guard Zion. Zion's going to outspeed him though, but thankfully Draymond's strong enough to at least hold him enough. And then regarding shooting wise, it's just really hard to stop the Warriors, especially if they're hot. And the only way I see them being hot is if they beat the Kings. So I just believe that the Warriors are going to be hot enough to stay up with the Pelicans and then just finish it because Curry's Curry. But um, if they lose, I will be happy. 100% because mm -hmm. I want the Pelicans to win. I think the Pelicans are a better team against the OKC than I do the Warriors. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think I think the Pelicans win that game, if I'm being honest. I think Warriors win, beat Sacramento. Then I think the Pelicans win at home against against the Warriors because you, you talk about shooting and also matchups as well. I think if the Pelicans want to go big, they can. You know, you can go Zion, you go Valanchunez, and you go Larry Nance. Then you could throw in Brandon Ingram and then well Trey Murphy if you want to throw him in, you know, as a as a as a facilitator, right? And then you got guys in there that could really I think I think they're very active defensively. Uh because you also got CJ McCullen and then Jose Alvarado, he's active in terms of defense. You know, he's not the greatest offensive player and he is small, but they're all active, I think, and they're constantly putting pressure. Whereas the Warriors, they're active offensively as well. 
setting their screens, uh, running and cutting back doors, Steve Kerr drawing them up plays. Uh, I don't know. I just think that Curry's time has come to an end. Not, I'm obviously still one of the top 10 players in the NBA, I think. It's just the Warriors just haven't had it this season. But I think, I don't know if they can really stop Zion like that. And then you got B.I. hitting his shots. You got C.J. McCollum hitting his shots. Trey Murphy coming off the bench hitting his shots. So I think you're convincing me more. Huh? I think you're just convincing me more about it. Okay. Uh, just good. Well, no, 100%. Because <laughs> I want the Pelicans to win. I just basketball mindset. I just think Warriors will. Uh-huh. I think the Pelicans are just overall superior team. I don't know why I think the Warriors win. I just more of a gut feeling. Mm-hmm. Just because, like you said, like especially now Zion's in better shape. <laughs> Uh, Ingram thankfully has came back and he's not really missed a step regarding his like speed and athleticism. Uh, he still needs to hit the shots, but he's going to be uh, working towards that because oh, he has two games to, during that and a week break as well. Mm-hmm. during. So it's just two shifts and you're good. Uh, CJ thankfully is playing well. He hasn't, doesn't really, he never really plays well against the Warriors, especially in Portland. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that changes for him. But I love that the Pelicans have so many like long raging wings. Like like you said, Jose Alvarado always doing the his nickname is Grand Theft Auto for a reason. Yeah, and you got Trey Murphy, and he's a he's an amazing scorer. He just sucks that he's on the bench. Yeah, because he can definitely be up there, especially with not a star per se, but borderline better than like better than Tobias. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you got Daniel uh, Dyson Daniels. You got Najee Marshall. You have there's another person in this team. I'm forgetting now. Okay. Herb Jones. Oh my God. Oh, yes. He's probably going to be all defensive team as well. And he's probably, you know, he's definitely going to be on Curry. Um, You have just so many people that are going to be up in your face defending. And I think that no matter what, it's going to be like a really rough and tough game, especially with the Warriors, um, if they're not shooting up to par. Because if they're able to shoot as well as they can be, then their floor is going to be spaced out. And then thankfully, there will be a lot of driving lanes or... DHOs for downhill offense with uh, Draymond Green and Steph Curry, but yeah, it's just this is the Pelicans like that would be the Pelicans moment to like show everybody like hey we're here, especially when like Ingram took it was six or seven against the Suns. I think it was six. <laughs> I think it was six. I don't think it was seven. Yeah, but Ingram went off. Yeah, he did. So I'm hoping that happens again and again because then I could see the Pelicans beating OKC. Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably going six or seven, but that's yeah, Pelicans, Pelicans. Thank you. Okay, good. Yeah, Pelicans. Good, good. Uh, DHO, shout out JJ Reddick. Oh my god, that, shout out podcast. That's where you got that from, ain't you? One hundred percent. Oh yeah, DHO putting shout out JJ Reddick's podcast, man. With the with the second greatest player of all time on there too. That is that is such a feat. Michael Jordan, if you're watching and you want to come on, <laughs> I'm in like getting on any podcast. No, he's not. He's not. <laughs> But anyways, um, let's switch over to the East, and we'll talk about Knicks Sixers, and then after that, then we'll get into the next topic because it's we've been, been going for fifty-seven minutes. Yeah, it's been a minute. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't have to apologize. We're, oh, no. we're talking. I'm apologizing to them. Oh yeah. <laughs> sorry. So, Knicks Sixers, like we mentioned early on, whoever wins that series is going to the conference finals to face. Boston, hundred percent. So, I think this is going to be such a good series, dog. It's going to be such a good series, and I'm gonna be honest. I know you're a Knicks fan, and I know I'm gonna be honest. I don't think you have bias towards this game, and I think that you think the Sixers win this series. But genuinely, I think the Knicks can win this series in six. I heard the wheels turning for a second. Sorry, uh, ah, dude, I'm so nervous about this. Well, so was I right? Do you think the Sixers are going to win the series? I think Sixers are winning, yeah. Okay. And I think that's just because I'm not trying to be biased. Yeah. Uh, I think no matter, like, if we get, like, Heat, heat beat Sixers, I think we beat six, beat the Heat. Granted, a lot of people. What? Yeah. Yeah. Granted, a lot of people in Miami or here or my friends or generally are probably going to put a stick to my head, but whatever. The Sixers, though, I'm scared of. And B hasn't really missed a step. Mm-hmm. He's back to, like, the way he is. It's just amazing to see him play to the point where like he if he played the whole season he would probably would have won MVP and then Tyrese Maxine being the all-star he is being probably the second or third best guard in the whole East Conference yeah yeah that's not crazy to say no I think Dominic Mitchell will be over him yeah and 
it's just going to be a tough matchup, especially, thankfully, we have the centers who are probably most capable to guard Embiid. That's not Al Horford. Mm-hmm. With Mitchell being a lot better now, as long as he stays healthy. And then Isaiah Hardenstein being more of, like, that slow and sturdy that you need. Yeah. Pause. <laughs> <coughs> when you smirked, I lost it. <laughs> uh, but I think, I, thankfully, we have that type of setup. And then we have OG guarding most likely going to be guarding uh, Tyrese Maxey and just from the difference uh, when we play Tyrese Maxey yes sorry yeah oh bro t- I thought I was thinking Tyrese Halliburton oh they made a trade <laughs> anyways continue uh, yeah and then you can and just regarding like if regarding if you need proof of like the difference with OG that we have of him is that those two games where we played the Sixers it was back to back we lost to the Sixers and it was like a Dumb, no scoring game, 79 76. Mm-hmm. OG comes back, granted no one beat, but then it was 102, and Sixers had 76 again. Holy crap. Yeah, like they didn't score one more point when OG was there. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, ever since we got OG, we're 20 and 3. That's the new, wow. that's the stat that everyone's really harping on. And don't get me wrong, I'm happy because you know me for how long and I've been a Knicks fan. Yeah. So yeah, depression. But. I'm really excited for this series. I'm really nervous about this series. I feel like it's one of those uh, seesaws that I'm going to be on where it's either happiness or I'm going to cry. <laughs> and it's not like I'm not like I'm not being serious about it, mm-hmm. but I do think we win. Um, I do think. Oh, now you're saying you think you win. No, like the heart. My heart's telling me that we're going to win. OK. Um, I'm hoping we do win. Jalen Brunson has been in like an MVP type season. He's not going to get it because Grant, thankfully, there's like five five six he will have better seasons than him but this is the best new york has been this is the most ball movement most offensive heavy defensive heavy team where they're just really just going after it with whether because you, you have josh hart dante Vincenzo, villanova boys you will have uh bojan bogdanovich who can score for 20 uh granted he's a little older now but he's still offensively sound and then thankfully you still also have um those pieces that can be complementary to them whether it's a uh, miles mcbride Alec Burks, I hate him though. <laughs> uh, Precious Achua, because he, he makes a Precious makes a ton of big plays, a ton of the hustle plays that people don't really appreciate. So I love our nine man. I just think because Embiid is that guy, yeah, <clears throat> that he'll be the reason we lose. Mm-hmm. The only I, the yeah, like you just said, the only reason you lose is because of Embiid. But he's got to go off for like, damn, excuse me, he's got to go off for like. 40 45 to, to win that series i think i think y'all went in six or seven i don't think well i don't want to say i don't think i think if anyone like i said for the timberwolf series if anyone wins in six the knicks y'all are winning six but if it goes seven it could go either way because game sevens are, are crazy but Jalen brenton been playing out of his mind so now that's yeah that's the only one we, we were uh going to talk about so now we will talk about who should win the NBA Sixth Man of the Year? So I'll give you the the four guys that are on here that should win it. So we got Malik Monk, averaging 15, 15 points per game, three rebounds, five assists on forty four percent shooting from the field. Then we got Nas Reed, averaging thirteen and a half, five boards, one assist, forty seven percent from the field. Then we got Norman Powell, fourteen points per game, two assists or two boards, one assist, 48% from the field. Then we got Bobby Portis, 14 points per game, seven boards, one assist, 50% from the field. I know I just threw a lot of stats out of you, but who are your top two guys that you think should win six minutes of the year? It's like you said, Nas Reed. Nas Reed? Nas Reed. I, I don't have him winning, but Nas Reed's top two. Okay. And then Malik Monk's like, I think he's going to win. I agree. Yeah. I like just Malik Monk's just been on a tear this whole season. He's been playing great. He's definitely proving everyone wrong ever since he got to L.A. to the, to Sacramento because he was a terrible player in the yeah. Hornets. And I just think that he's just – he found his home. He's played the best he's ever been. He's scoring. He's – I think he averages like, what, five assists? Four? Uh, point, four point something. Five point one assists. Okay, cool. I was right. Awesome. But he's just became such a well all-around player. He's basically this ver- uh, this decade's J.R. Smith, in my opinion, just without oh, the okay. – Without the craziness on the side, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just he's just that guy, and it's just amazing to watch for him. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, I wouldn't be. I, I think those are the top two: Nas Reed and, and Malik Monk. I, I'm gonna have to agree with you there. Because um, Norman Powell and Bobby Portis, they've they've been good. Uh, Bobby Portis has, I think, been a better piece for the Bucks than Norman Powell is for the Clippers. Um, I could agree. But yeah, Malik Monk has definitely, especially going to LA, expecting to be such a big part of their team, and then kind of just not being rotated in well, getting in like uh, what's it called. Uh, not inefficient, but inconsistent minutes there, n- not knowing how to be thrown into rotation, and, and then to come in and to play how he's been playing. So I think Malik Monk wins it for sure. So now let's talk about MVP. I think there's only one answer here. Uh, Donnie, if you're watching, there's only one answer here. It is not SGA. Luca is the only right answer to win NBA MVP. Do you agree? 100%, yeah. Okay, good. Lucas just... He's it's crazy. Like, do you have his stats on? I'll, I'll look it up. I'm pretty sure his stats are 33, nine and nine. If I'm not mistaken. No, yeah. Like everyone last season kept saying, like, how is he going to top it? And he just did. He just does it. Like he he has he averaged 30 last year. He now averages 33. He had like eight or nine, eight, seven or eight rebounds. He now it gets nine, right? Like he, he improved on every stat. And then also the people saying like, oh, he comes in shape. He plays slow. Kyrie comes in. Now the whole offense is a lot faster. Yep. And I think they're up top 13-ish in pace. They just they just play faster. And like now because of that, like it's just less dribbling, less pressure on, on Luka. And you can just really tell like how much of a fluid player like on just you only need, really need two steps and you're good. He's just that player where it's just simple. He can get any shot he wants, dog. It's crazy. So stats here. 33.9 points per game. So he's averaging 34, which is first in the NBA. In terms of rebounds, 9.2 board, boards per game as a point guard, which is 15th in the NBA in, in all positions, which is, which is crazy, which is crazy. Then assists, 9.8 assists per game. So 10 assists. That is second in the NBA. Then he's 48.7% shooting. So he's averaging 34 points per game on 9... Nine rebounds, ten assists on forty-eight percent shooting. Yeah, it's just it's just amazing. That and is oh, crazy. It's he's just yeah, he's just been one of one of a kind, and you can definitely really tell just watching him. Uh, and even though people will probably bring up the winning part, mm-hmm. Mavs won like twenty games since all like they're the they have the best record since All Star break. I think the the winning part is so stupid. It, I I think it's idiotic because when Jokic won his back-to-back MVPs the the Nuggets had 49 wins when he won the other one and then the second one he had like Nuggets had like 46 or 45 wins yeah so it's like do you really need to be the one seed to win the freaking MVP I think it's so stupid but Luka is in in NBA history he has the the second highest PRA points rebounds and assists when you add it up in NBA history, the second highest. You know who's behind? Will Chamberlain. Yes. The only other guy to average 30 points, 30 rebounds, and whatever, you know. So, if Luka does not win, these, it's so stupid. We don't need these analysts to be voting on these league awards. We need actual players who have played against these players that know the game of basketball because they play the game of basketball at the highest level. We need them voting for these awards. But this is definitely Luka's award to lose. I think if anyone else wins it, I think it's Jokic. Yeah. Yeah. I think no. it's Jokic. SGA has a sliver of a chance. But it's definitely Luka's award. I'm glad I'm not the only one that noticed like this whole SGA agenda that came out of nowhere. Oh. Don't get me wrong. Amazing player. Yeah. yeah. Just felt forced. Yeah. Yeah. If Jokic wins, I'm not going to be angry about it because he definitely deserved last year. Uh and then even though Joel Embiid didn't play the whole season, if he did, I think he would have won. 100%. Because then he would have got the stats and the winning part. Yeah. Uh, but 100%. It's just Lucas to lose. And then there's no argument. Yeah, I was not going to. I was going to say something borderline, but let me not say that. Borderline, like, cancelable or borderline? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. not going to say that. <laughs> Never mind. Um, I've asked everyone on the podcast. I'm going to ask you when we've talked to NBA. What NBA player has the most pressure to win an NBA title? Jesus. Uh, ironically, that was like the first topic on ESPN first take today. I know. I watched it. Yeah. Be, uh, Stephen A said James Harden. And then uh, Shannon 
said uh, Katie, right? And I got to agree with the sons, yeah. Really? You think I, it's Katie? I think, uh, yeah, Katie, basically. Uh, but I think the sons, because they're the team that made the big trade. They're the one that talked the most during the summer, especially Book. Granted, it was also to promote his shoe. Uh, shout out to Nike. Don't quit, don't fire me. Um, but uh, I just think that's just one of those things where they did this whole trade. They set up this whole team to win this year, basically. Even though everyone kept saying, you don't have a point guard. You guys have no defense. Uh, it's just not going to flow. This isn't pickup ball. And it, granted, sure, they're in the playoffs. Sure, they have a chance. Every team does. I just think that because of that, they, they're they probably going to lose in the first round. And that's going to be the third time since the KD left OKC that they lost in the first round. Yeah. Nets. Against the Celtics. And then uh, Celtics, uh, the Bucks. No, Bucks was second round. Kitty just loses too early. Yeah. Too many times. And he's choked a couple times. Granted, again, for you guys, for the Clippers, I think there's less pressure because, granted, again, the Mavericks could win it all. Yeah. No, we're talking about players, not teams. Yeah, players-wise, it's just James Harden has less pressure now because he is the third option. He's not seen to yeah. be the leader and stuff like that. And as long as he keeps your offense flowing, I think that's my expectations for him. If people have higher expectations for James Harden, like to be the superstar, then they're just stupid then they're just expecting way too much for a player that's kind of like out of it now Mm -hmm. on his last leg. Mm -hmm. Uh, The whole Paul George thing, I think he'll be fine as a second option. Unless Kawhi's injured, then yes, that's the pressure is going to be there. Yeah. But I do think KD. Oh, damn. Okay. Hey, Sue said Jason Tatum. You know that? Did you watch that podcast? If you didn't, it's fine. No, yeah. I watched, I watched everyone except for Donnie. Okay. And um, the one where your, your friend. Ibram? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Yeah. I would yeah, I will do them except for the last two. Okay. I understand for the Jason Tatum part, especially because he's went to the conference finals like five or six times since he's been drafted. He's been the Celtics leader. Um, it's just that he's literally the same age as me. I know, he's twenty five, dog. Yeah, like it he has lots of time. The Celtics have an amazing management team. So no matter what, he will always be there. It's just a matter of like how many chances <laughs> does it mm-hmm. take for him. Like, don't get me wrong, when he's 30 and uh, he's just at the point where, like, damn, nothing has happened. Yeah. Then, yes, we can get on him about it. But he's just too young. Super teams, whatever, sure. But there's no way of, like, them failing unless it's the final step. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, and granted, he, when they went to the NBA Finals, A, they almost blew a 3-0 lead. Wait. No. They were down 3-0. They were down 3-0. Yeah, that was last year. The year before, when they played the Warriors, they played the greatest shooter God has ever created. So it's not like, you know, he did something wrong. It was just he played Steph Curry. And that team was just clicking at that time with Andrew Wiggins being a big piece of of that offense. And then uh, uh, Kavon Looney also stepping up and, and playing well in that series so yeah i don't think there's pressure there i had mentioned Kawhi. i'm i sound like a freaking broken record but i think it's Kawhi. but i'm not going to get into it because if you watch my podcast i've said it multiple times and i've given my reasons and i'm not going to give them again so you have, uh, spark notes spark notes i got you like so so like three points yeah okay i'll just i'll just list them so Kawhi won finals mvp in san antonio People don't really think he should have won finals MVP. It's kind of like Iguodala winning finals MVP um, over Steph Curry in that 2015 uh, win, right? So Kawhi, he, he wasn't even the first option on that San Antonio team because they had Tim Duncan, Manu, and uh, what's the other guy? Tony Parker. Tony Parker. So, you know, it's like, okay. Then he comes to Toronto, wins his ring there, nice playoff run, but KD tears his Achilles. Uh, Clay Thompson tears every literally everything known to man in his knee. So it's like, okay, that's fine. Comes to the Clippers. Semis in the bubble. Blow 3-1 lead to, to um, the Nuggets. The Nuggets. Next series, or next year. Blows out his a- ACL. Um, Clippers go to the Western Conference Finals, but he blows out his knee in the semis. Next series, or next year, misses the entire year. Now, here we are this year. Oh, no. Then then last year, against the Suns, drops 38. Next game, drops like 30. Tears his meniscus. Now, this year, 
plays the most games he's ever played being a Clipper. And now he has knee inflammation. And we don't even know if it's just knee inflammation. We don't know if he tore his ACL or whatever. So you have these five years to show for nothing. And it's like you're always hurt and you got to win something. He is one of nine players in NBA history to win two NBA championships and two finals MVPs. One of nine players. I think he is a top five greatest two-way players of all time. Is that crazy to say? That's not crazy. Okay. He's so good when he's healthy, but it's just his health. And since he's, since he's gone to LA, what does he have to show for it? Missing a full season, blowing out his knee twice, and blowing a 3-1 lead. So I was like, he's, he needs a ring to... Especially, I think this would be the hardest playoff run because you would have to, A, go through Dallas. Then if you win that, it, it depends who you match up against, but possibly... Um, Potentially, you guys are facing um, OKC and then either New Orleans or Golden State or play in team. Right. And then, no, uh, the Nuggets. You guys are 4-5. Yeah, but once we get to the conference finals, I think the Nuggets are going to go to the conference finals is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought we're... I was, I'm stuck on the second round. Oh, Oh, sorry. So, first round, Dallas. Second round, let's just say OKC. Third round, Nuggets. Then fourth, then the finals, Celtics. So, that's that's a hard run. So, if Kawhi can do that run and he wins his ring, then I'm like, okay. You know, it's not pressure, but that's why I think there's pressure on him. Okay. So, you're looking at it as a more of like, you've been here for so long now and you have nothing to show for it. You're going on like story arc, basically. Yeah. And then also the Toronto thing. Like I said, you know, he went against a Golden State team that was insanely injured. So, it's like, was that ring really legitimate sort of thing? You know, because Katie was going off before he tore his freaking Achilles in that game. And then Clay Thompson just wants to tear everything his knee. You know, he won the chip in San Antonio. It wasn't the biggest piece. So it's like, I want to see him win a chip, like legitimately. Like you're healthy, you got your guys, and you're going against all these juggernauts when they're healthy. I agree with you 100%. Okay. Funny thing enough, I think you're going to call me crazy. I had the Raptors winning against the Warriors no matter what. There's no way, though. Yes. No, I disagree. You could ask a Seuss, though. No, not, I'm not saying what no, you said is wrong, but I disagree. If the Warriors are fully healthy, bro, they're winning that series. I, like, yeah, I agree. With, I just, again, like, my heart, like, I just, I kept saying Raptors are winning it all before, before like, the whole thing happened. But oh, okay. that's just a tangent. Uh-huh. All right. I see. I have a couple other things in here, but... I don't want to rinse and, pre- rinse and repeat from what we've talked about on, on past podcasts. So, I'll, I'll give you this last topic. Do you think playoff Jimmy can step up? I hate this topic. Genuinely, I hate this topic. Victor, do you think playoff Jimmy Butler can take the Miami Heat to a conference finals? If they win the play-in game, yes. Really? There's like a... If they win and they face us... Then there's like a 40, 45-ish percent chance they beat us because it's the Heat and playoff Jimmy is a person that's... he From a person that goes from 25 best player in the league to top five yeah. out of nowhere. And yeah, that definitely. There's a chance they can beat us. They beat us last year. Granted, we didn't mm-hmm. have OG. Brunson's not the same player he was last season. Uh, Randall played as well. Uh, and so... But it's highly possible. Like, it's not out of the ordinary because they literally went to the finals last year. Mm-hmm. After that, second round is whoever. First round is going to be the Celtics. And they beat them. Like, it's highly possible. Don't get me wrong. Like, conference finals is definitely possible. Probably 20% chance. Because, again, I'm pretty sure everyone in their moms, except for Miami Heat fans, going to say Sixers are going to win. So, yeah, that's highly possible. 20%. Like, if I had to put money on it, 20%. Okay. Who do you think wins the NBA championship? Nuggets. Really? Yeah. Whoa. I'm boring. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's crazy. Are you serious? Yeah. And I'm not. I'm not saying that because Jesus is my brother. Mm-hmm. I just, just watching, watching as many NBA games that, that I, I've watched. It's amazing to see how many teams play, and one team just has no problem winning, or just finding Fair an enough. answer. Yeah, because that pick and roll, man. That Jamal Murray Jokic pick and roll is. There's some things you can't stop, and that's one of them. Yeah, you can try and limit it. As much as possible, that's what you do, you know, with professionals in any sport. You can't stop them, but you can find ways to limit them as much as possible. And that's just one of the things 
that has no one has stopped it yet. They've limited it, but they've not stopped it. Yeah. So yeah, it's, that's definitely a good one. Yeah. Can't wait to scream. That's the horse guy when he oh, when he grabs okay. the trophy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's gonna be uh, Denver Celtics. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be Nuggets Celtics probably in six. Mm-hmm. In my opinion. I think that goes seven. I think KP steps up. I really do. Uh, not KCP, KP. Chris S. Porzingis. I got it. Okay. Because, <laughs> bro, I, that starting five is insane, bro. That starting five is insane. Uh, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, uh, Chris S. Porzingis, Drew Holiday, and then they start in Derek White, right? Yeah, Derek White. So, bro, that starting five is crazy, dog. Oh, my God. And KP, in terms of his efficiency around the, you know, in the paint, is the most efficient. Like, post up. Post up offense. So yeah, no, no, uh, yeah. He's been the most efficient player. When, so this is probably his most efficient year since the Knicks. Yeah, it's amazing because he hasn't been as injured as he usually is, especially for like how much the Celtics gave away. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, this team is that team is amazing, hundred percent of the time. You got because you have two of probably the best guards and that play defense no matter what. Mm-hmm. They're gonna guard whoever they're and just give like every single point guard or just your your best player no matter what is going to have a hard time against them. Yeah. And it's amazing because you have probably, yeah, yeah, being being realistic, like you have five A minus defenders on yeah. on top of your best player, no matter on top of your whole team, really. And Kristaps is the probably the perfect roamer you can have. Uh, just, it's going to be an amazing series. I hope it does happen, just for like my eyes to just enjoy. Uh, but I agree with you one hundred percent. I just think. There's going to be like a flame out of some sort. Celtics usually have that type of situation, especially with how much they rely on their jump shooting. And ironically, you know how I brought up the Suns uh, point production? Yep. Celtics are bottom five as well. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. What the heck? Yeah. And they barely get the free throw line for some reason. Yeah. yeah. I think the Nuggets are like somewhere like last 10 as well, but that's just not a good combination, especially winning in basketball, mm-hmm. in my opinion. But yeah. Yeah, bro. Bro, this has been great. Is no, there any is there anything else you want to touch on or add or discuss before we move on or wrap it up? Uh, playoffs wise, nah, not really. Okay, I'm just ex- I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm high, bro. I think this is gonna be the most competitive. <sighs> yeah, 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 we, bro. Especially those playing games, dog. <laughs> oh my god, they're gonna be crazy. I'm trying to order pizza, bro, every night. No, I'm not, don't do that. But magic win fifty percent off. Magic win. If you're in Orlando, you get 50% off Papa John's. I'm not going to lie, though. Domino's deep dish pizza goes crazy. You, if you want, because my friend Alan put me on a little hack. P- Domino's deep dish pizza. Um, barbecue chicken. If you want to add spinach, it's cool. Barbecue, wait, barbecue chicken. On the pizza. On the pizza, yes. It's going to be deep dish and cooked and all that. Um, but in the special instructions, put um, mixed honey with the bread. Is it good? It's a I will kill for it. <laughs> I'm not a barbecue chicken guy on the pizza. I'm just, I'm a pepperoni guy. Like, I don't, I don't go crazy with it. I just, pause. I just pepperoni on my pizza, call it a day, and that's it. You know, give that's me fine. some, some garlic knots or whatever, garlic bread, cheese bread. Give me my water. <laughs> I'm chilling, bro. That's fine. That's what we go to CC's to experiment. Did you just say CC's pizza dog? To experiment. Okay, I can I can see it. <laughs> I I can see it. To experiment that uh, you got to put an asterisk on that because there's no way. I don't think I've ever heard, aside from growing up, um, because they would have like CC's Pizza Night. Aside from growing up, I've never heard anyone say, "Yo, you guys want to go to CC's Pizza?" Because <laughs> if anyone says that, I'm gonna slap them. I'll be like, "No, nah, we, we ain't going to CC's, bro." I I know the perfect way to end the podcast, dude. What? Do you want to go to CC's no. Pizza? <laughs> Oh my god. But I guess with that note, thank you for coming on the show, bro. It was it was definitely a really good episode. We talked a lot of good stuff, a lot of good playoff stuff. Like you said, playoffs are gonna be so crazy. I'm I'm excited. Um it, but the thing is like I'm gonna be traveling uh Sunday when the Clippers play, like I had mentioned to you. So trying I know, I know, I know, man. And then I'm gonna be in Illinois working. So, thankfully, the games aren't till night, so I can watch the games. But, but yeah, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate having you. This is a great time. Um, any any closing remarks before before I sign off? I'm proud of you, man. Genuinely. Thank you. Just building everything. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Yeah.
I from that one idiot that let me crash their dad's car with a dirt bike. Oh my god, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> your dad hated me. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Mr. Gun. <laughs> uh, to being the guy you are now. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate no problem. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you for coming on. But yeah, that's gonna do it for today's episode. Hope you all enjoyed. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If there's anything uh, you want me to talk about in a future episode, or if you want to be a guest on my episode or on my podcast, drop it down in the comments below. But thank you guys so much for all the support on all these episodes. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be it. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all next video. Peace. Goodbye. Let's go, man.